Thank you. Thank you very much. And good morning to you. And welcome to GSA Multiple Award Schedules Advanced. Um, we have, this is our second presentation of the, of the expo and uh, we are pleased to be here to be able to give you this information this morning. I'm Tommy Benton and I'm a senior procurement analyst. My colleague is Nicholas West and Nick and I are going to team teach this presentation to you. We're both out of the GSA Federal Acquisition Service Office of Acquisition Management in Crystal City. Uh, we, uh, we work in the Multiple Award Schedules Policy Office, and so we are aware of up and coming changes that are uh, affecting the schedules. And so this morning, what our presentation pre predominantly is relating to those changes that are going to be affecting schedules. And some of them are going to be affecting schedules as soon as Monday. All right. And so with no further ado, I'm going to turn over the podium to, to, uh, to Nick and allow him to talk with you for a few moments. Good morning. So what is a federal supply schedule? Now you may have heard of something called uh, multiple award schedules or FSS or MAS or just schedules. All of that is the same thing. That's the federal supply schedules. That's what it's called in the FAR. Uh, it's a government-wide contract, so anyone in the government can use it, uh, as well as some other um, entities. And it offers commercial products and services, so um, anything from, from supplies like pens and pencils to uh, total solutions of IT solutions, things like that. But it has to be of a commercial nature, so it has to fit the definition of a commercial item. And so. Uh, it was established back in 1949 by the uh, Federal Property Administrative Services Act, and it gives GSA the authority to set up the schedules program. We have also delegated our authority to the VA, so they have their own VA schedules, uh, so you may uh, know about those. How do you order off schedules? To order off of a schedule, you have to follow the procedures in FAR 8, subpart 8.4. And today we'll talk about the different types of orders you, you might have, which depends on whether or not it has a statement of work um, for your requirement. We'll talk about Section 863. It's the hot new topic in the schedules program. It, it talks about some new competition requirements in there. And then we'll talk a little bit about the uh, BPAs setting, off, uh, setting up off of uh, the schedules. So what is 863? You'll hear that term a lot coming up lately. It is uh, Section 863 of the National Defense Authorization Act of 2000, uh, fiscal year 2009. And it actually takes effect Monday. So you'll have to start complying with these new changes as soon as you get back to work next week. Um, what, I, what we've done in this presentation is we've underlined the changes from what used to be in effect to what, is, uh, what you'll see on Monday in the FAR. And so all, the, all that text will be underlined. And then what it does really is it enhances competition when you order off of the schedules program or really any multiple award contract um, out there. So it affects FAR subpart 8.4 and um, 16.5, which is the indefinite delivery contract vehicles. It also adds some requirements when you limit sources, um, so sole source type stuff. It makes you do some extra posting on the Fed biz ops and things like that. We'll talk about that a little bit later too. So the first type of order you might place would be uh, an order with a requirement that does not have a statement of work, which is something really fairly simple. Uh, it's like pens and pencils. Most, most products don't require a statement of work. Um, some fixed fee services, like some trainings, things like that. So. To determine what you have to do when you order, it, it depends on the estimated amount of your requirement, how much you think you're going to spend. If you think you're going to spend under the micro-purchase threshold, which is, who knows, this is the advanced class, you should know what the micro-purchase threshold is. Who knows what that is? 3000 good. Um, yes, anything under $3,000, you can just order directly off of any schedule. Um, you place your order with who you think the best value uh, contractor is. You, we'd like you to distribute it among different contractors and go to small businesses if possible. Um, and then anything up into now the simplified acquisition threshold, 
Does anyone know what that used to be? Hopefully. Oh, yes. It used to be 100,000 and, sorry, the question wasn't very clear. Um, that threshold used to be the maximum order threshold, which is why it's underlined in this presentation. So that's changed from the maximum order threshold, which is something that is uh, specific depending on the different schedule or sin even. Um, now that's standardized across all schedules to the $150,000 simplified acquisition threshold. So anything up until that threshold, you have to survey at least three contractors, which is you can just go on GSA Advantage and look at their price lists and determine the best value. Uh, you may seek price reductions at that point. You, may, you don't have to. It's not required by the FAR. And then you select the best value quote. Anything over the $150,000 threshold. Uh, this is something new with the orders that do not require a statement of work. You have to develop an RFQ. So no matter if, if you think you can't just look on the schedule contract, call them up and say, we think you're the best value and place your, your um, order orally, as it also is underlined in this presentation. Um, so you have to develop the RFQ and then send it to at least three contractors and then receive at least three quotes back. Now we think the best way of doing this, and the FAR says the best way of doing this, is using eBuy. So if you put your RFQ on eBuy and you don't receive three quotes back, you've satisfied the requirement. So you don't, you don't necessarily have to. And that may depend on um, your agency also. And then you also must seek your price reductions over that threshold. So the next slide here talks about an order with a statement of work. The changes are identical to the other ones, uh, to the other slide. Except here, you've already developed your RFQ and your statement of work. So that's, not, that's, no, that's nothing new. You also must receive three quotes back over the simplified acquisition threshold. So what is a statement of work, and what should it have in it? Well, it's basically something that's required for more complex requirements. Um, it tells you what, it tells the contractor what work they need to do, um, the location, the period of performance, the delivery schedule, when you need that stuff. Um, we want you to make your, perform your statements of work performance-based to the maximum extent practical, which means you tell them what you need done, and they tell you how they're going to do it. So this is very important. We don't want to be in the business of telling them how to do their, do their job, because if we do and they fail, it's our fault, not theirs. What, what else needs to be in your, require, uh, in your RFQ besides a statement of work? You need to have evaluation factors. You need to tell them what you're going to evaluate them on, and then you need to evaluate them on those factors. Some suggested factors to include uh, up here on the slide include the past performance. You always do that. You always do price. It's always very important. Typically, we'll do some sort of experience. Um, another good tip is to use socioeconomic status as a evaluation factor. It helps you get your small business goals. You can also use environmental attributes as your, as your evaluation factor. And there's plenty of, slot, plenty of training here at Expo talking about how to do that. What do you need to document? And how has that changed in the 863 requirement? Well, you need to say it, it's, nothing's really changed besides now you need to show that you complied with the ordering procedures if the uh, requirement was estimated over the simplified acquisition threshold. So you can print out your e-buy screenshot, you can show the quotes that you received back, however you need to do that, but now that has to be in the contract file. You also need to say who you awarded it to, the price, why you awarded it to them, all that stuff. Uh, 